Hey everyone, we're back with another hybrid build, this time with the Titan X. So we're gonna be tearing this thing down. I've already done the thermal tests. In part three of this video, we'll look at the thermal results of the non-torn down version, that'd be this one, versus the hybrid version that we're creating ourselves using this EVGA hybrid kit. We have a couple of these available and basically just try and mod them onto the cards ourselves if you haven't seen that before. So the goal here is to see how much better we can make the thermals because they're pretty high as is stock. And to that end, can we further increase the overclock with the 1080, we got an extra 100 megahertz out of this thing on the 1080. We'll see if we can replicate that here. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by iWay Power and their new Element Gaming PC, which has arc LED fans and underglow lighting with a large tempered glass side window. And this video is also brought to you by Sam, who's one of our viewers and loaned this to us while we were in England. I was able to pick it up and bring it back home for about a week. So we've got some time to do a hybrid build and see how it works and that's about it. Let's get into this thing. So first of all, this video, we're gonna take this apart after the teardown, we'll build it back up into a hybrid card, hopefully. And uh, then part three, we'll have the results as normally so we can see the thermal impact and all of that stuff. This is a new toolkit. This is not a, sp a sponsored toolkit, just a new one. Uh, so we've got a lot of things here. I haven't quite used them yet, but let's see. Okay, just like the 1080, this uses a ton of really tiny, annoying screws. Uh, that are very easily broken at the shaft, so we'll have to try and avoid that this time because it's not my card, so I have to care more about it. So the last few cards gave us a false sense of hope in that the 1060 was a pretty easy hybrid build other than the actual building part, but the, the teardown was pretty easy. And this one, it looks like we've got a million screws to deal with. Uh, so we've got to keep better track of them where they go. Not quite sure yet. Depends how this build goes. Uh, will, that will dictate whether or not this thing gets rebuilt as the original card or if it gets uh, left as a hybrid card and Sam continues to use it that way. It just depends on if, if it's mountable in a case because as we've done in the past, sometimes the hybrid versions have tubes running out where the expansion slot is that's fine for an open air bench just for testing and validation, but obviously does not work for uh, home use. Okay, so there's part of the back plate. It's the same as the 1080. Nothing special here at all. It looks there's a thermal pad. It looks like wow, that's a very. What the hell is that? It's like cloth. Anyway, thermal pad. Uh, covering up part of the card. You can take that off if you wanted to. The ide idea is to allow better airflow if you were to put these in SLI, but we haven't really tested to see if that is how it works. Obviously power headers here, six pin, eight pin, solder points here. And then on this part, we've got some solder points that are unused for an eight pin if you wanted out this side. Uh, that's obviously not the case here though. Uh, and then we can see the VRM is going to be where this is on the other side of the card. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that once we take the full thing apart. Okay, so there's the second half of the back plate. Really just, it's just a cheap back plate. It's really more meant for aesthetic reasons uh, than anything else. Does, does some level of structural support with all those screws, but very tiny screws in some uh, cases, and those break easily when you're reassembling if not careful, as we've shown in the previous video. Uh, so expansion slot cover thing is still mounted. That's uh, got screws on that side. This has loosened the heat sink, which uses a vapor chamber on this particular card, and a blower fan, which is over here. Obviously, see that right there. So now we've got to get into the underside of the shroud. I'm remembering what a nightmare the 1080 was to take apart. So we've got these tiny things, which I believe, believe this will fit over. Yeah. So we can use this. We learn learn that from the 1080 video after uh, uh, trying to use pliers to take them off. Uh, so we can use that to take those off. I don't remember what order these come out, uh, but it doesn't really doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, let's let's get the rest of the expansion cover off. We don't need that on there. All right, 
So that simplifies things. I think it's time to start taking the shroud apart. Okay, this thing's not held on by adhesive. I remember that from last time. <laughs> Thought it was held on by adhesive and then snapped ours in half. come apart and what won't. All right, there goes that. There's the back half of the shroud. Uh, mostly no function except one important function. These is actually pretty advanced comparatively heat sink. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, these things, uh, as you can see, they go back in like that. The window's under the shroud, obviously. The main purpose of these, functionally, outside of the aesthetics part, is to guide airflow from this, so the window keeps it trapped under there, uh, so you don't have you don't have air evacuating from the system before it fully goes through the entire what looks to be aluminum heat sink. So aluminum heat sink here this is actually loose. I can take it out in a minute. The air comes in uh, the front, blows through, comes out the back, and that's exactly what you want it to do. There's the cooler. It's a vapor chamber setup. No heat pipes but vapor chamber in this instance uh, is going to be better than a heat pipe setup anyway, just based on the, the design of the heat sink and the cooler. So that obviously, now it's there. Your air comes in here. This is the cold plate. I'm not positive if it's uh, just like a nickel plated copper or if it's just straight aluminum, but um, sometimes they, uh, they'll nickel plate it, although that doesn't make a lot of sense for something you don't see, because the main point of nickel plating is, is for looks, not for thermals. And obviously there's no exposed copper under the paste, so uh, that instantly answers part of that. Okay, so here's the part. Here's the GPU itself. Uh, the GPU is the shiny bit that's branded as NVIDIA, made in Taiwan. Uh, it is GPU, GP102-400. So GP, just quick refresh, GP102, that is the actual GPU. Titan X is not the GPU. Titan X is the video card. GP102 is the GPU. Dash 400 is uh, its version of that GPU, just like 104 has and 106 have 400 or 200 variants, depending on what you're looking at. A1 is the revision. Uh, A in the industry means that it is a consumer model as opposed to X, which is an internal tested model. And NVIDIA branding around it, you've got those super tiny capacitors on the substrate, the green bits, the substrate. And then this metal plate is probably just for, for structural uh, integrity. So that's the GPU. Ideally, we leave the back plate, or I should say the base plate, not the back plate. Ideally, we leave the base plate on here uh, and then mount the cooler to that, as that would help us continue to cool the VRAM and VRM without requiring additional uh, copper to be mounted to the, the card, which is kind of a, a pain to do and not always effective. Um, but uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll take, take, take apart the rest first and look at it. So we're going to take apart the base plate just to at least look at the card, if nothing else. This is the other side of the shroud. Goes over here, helps direct airflow with this. Uh, and then that is the LED power. So this cable is covered in uh, electrical tape here and connects to the LED. And that's really it, that's all that does. So let's, let's get all this out of the way. If it were my card, <laughs> just pull on it, <laughs> pull on it until it comes off. Okay, so let's go ahead and start taking apart the underside. Uh, so again, the, the objective would be to leave this base plate on here for thermal reasons. We are going to take it off just to look at the card and then uh, hopefully it doesn't have uh, too much complexity to just get back on there and leave it there with the cooler. The only reason that wouldn't work 
is if the, like with the, uh, what was it, the 1060, if we have an issue where that's just not going to fit because it's too wide. Uh, in that case, then we we just take it off and run the tests, and uh, maybe put some aftermarket VRM and VRM. Remember when this happened last time? Oh, uh, so that seems to happen with the, the 1080 and Titan X specifically. So that's that's good. That's out. That's out now. We can we can ignore that. To do like last time, just unscrew it most of the way and then leave. <laughs> okay. That was a pain in the ass. Here we go. We've got <clears throat> VRAM. Uh, modules, let's pull it this way. So for the board, some missing circuitry over here, a couple missing spots that have not been filled, uh, probably for cost reasons, just didn't need it or something like that. And GPU proper, VRAM, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of those, it is twelve gigabytes, so that means they're one gigabyte modules or eight gigabits is normally how they are actually listed and sold. And these are made by Micron, as one would expect. So this is GDDR5X. As with the 1080, and Micron is the only current known manufacturer of GDDR5X, so that's what the memory is. This is the VRM, MOSFETs, uh, capacitor bank, and it looks like it is a, is that a two phase memory? It's either a two or three phase memory, VRM, and then a seven or eight phase core VRM, depending on what's going on the rest of the board. Um, so pretty extensive VRM setup based on what we saw with the 1080, but Still not sure how far you'd get on that if you were an extreme overclock or something like that. But for our purposes, this is just fine because we're not going to be bypassing any electrical restrictions or shorting shunts and things like that. So that's the setup of the board. I think that pretty much covers all the core stuff. The, this is the fan, or we've got a fan and an LED header. That's what these are. That's for the fan. It's PWM, controlled by the needs of the GPU based on temperature. LED header, pretty simple. So that's that's the basics of the board. As far as cooling, already talked about the vapor chamber setup. That's what this is. And this is the rest of the cooling solution. So you've got the fan here that's screwed in through the underside. That's what this screw is here. And there's only two more probably under this pad as well. This pad is covering the VRM. Uh, so you can even see the imprint there of the MOSFETs. The inductors or the chokes, which is what these things are. These R22 labeled. Inductors uh, are what protrude through here. Those can withstand very high heat. It's basically coiled wire in there and the kind of like a ferrite core on a camera charger. This is the thermal pad for the capacitor bank. VRAM thermal pads, one's missing. That's because it's still on the module. And then these other thermal pads here for the rest of the components around the board, including the uh, VRAM VRM, which was <laughs> Confusing to figure out the organization of letters in my head. In part two, we'll build this into a hybrid card. That means we're going to be mounting a liquid cooler to it. Again, going to try and keep the, keep the back plate, the base plate, and mount this to the base plate. If it does not work, we'll go like this and, and figure out a solution for the rest of it, just with copper and things that we have around. Uh, and then we've got some copper shims if we need them as well in the event that the GPU is not tall enough to exceed the height of the base plates sort of recessed bracket. So that's it. As always, Patreon link in the post for the video. Make sure you subscribe so you can see part two where we build it up. As I've made clear in the past, these videos are not tutorials. Don't tear down your card based on these videos or build one up necessarily. Now, once we get to the results, we can show you how well normally liquid works. We'll see if that it remains the case here. It was the case with the 1080, 1060, and the RX 480. And I should imagine would remain the case here. It just depends on how difficult it is to mount the liquid cooler to it. But 
when we see these reduced thermals, which really should happen, we normally go down to sub 20 degrees C, so you're somewhere in the uh, 16 C to 20 C range. That's a delta value, so you add it in with the ambient to maybe 20 Celsius, you're in the 40s, versus uh, adding with ambient in the 80s with the reference cooler. So pretty significant difference, and it does remove the issue of thermal throttling at certain thresholds, depending on the cards. Like 85, 86 Celsius for this card, it'll throttle its clock. You lose some performance, you have some frame uh, reduction in the 1% and 0.1% lows area. But that's all stuff we'll talk about in the last video. So thank you for watching. As I said a moment ago, links in the description below, Patreon link, the postal video, all that stuff. And thank you to Sam for letting us borrow this card. I'll see you all next time.